So tell me about IGA. What does it do? IGA is going to coat the surfaces of our, uh, of our mucous membranes, the surfaces, the eyes, nasal passage, sinuses, uh, lungs, GI tract, genital urinary tract. So uh, how does that protect us, the IGA? What does it do? Well, it's going to be sitting at the surface, and it's going to be the first thing that attaches to the bacteria and viruses that try to invade our body. So it fights them right at the front line. That's, That's right. our front line attack. Absolutely. That's IGA. Yes. Now, if the IGA, you find it's low, what do you tell the patient? Well, interestingly, you either make enough or you don't make any at all. We don't have any moderate IgA deficient patients. They're either zero or they just don't, they, they make a little or a lot. Uh, but we, it, it's a distinction between the two. Uh, but uh, what we first do is we like to see how they respond to their vaccines because we have a portion of the IgA deficient patients who don't respond well to vaccines and don't make good new antibodies and we'll give them their, those antibodies. If they don't fall into that category, we might use prophylactic antibiotics for those patients uh, and a lot more than we would use in a normal patient. So it's a good explanation why somebody's getting an infection all the time. If they don't have that frontline barrier right there, they're gonna get a lot of infections. Can you replace the IgA? Can you? No, you can't. I wish we could, uh, but it's, it's uh, produced in the bloodstream and then it has a transport molecule that takes it out to the surface of the tissue. So we've not been able to reproduce the IgA. How about the IgG, the other one that you mentioned? Uh, that antibody, does it help protect frontline or is it backline? Uh, I would call it middle and back line. You're gonna, uh, it's going to get into the tissues, it's going to be in the bloodstream, and it's going to neutralize viruses, and it's going to attach to bacteria so that the white cells can kill it. Very effective uh, way to treat these infections. Basically, in simple terms, what does the IgG do? Uh, it's called gamma globulin. It, again, it floats into the, in the bloodstream and the tissues and it, and it neutralizes viruses and bacteria, attaches to them, assists the other parts of the immune system to kill these bugs. A uh, very effective way to, way to uh, fight things off. So it's pretty important. Very important. What's more important do you think, the IgA or the IgG? That's a hard question. It is a hard question. You need them both, but IgG would, you can do quite nicely just with IgG without having the IgA. Is it a difficult test to measure the immunoglobulin G, the IgG? Not at all, nor is the IgA either. Um, how do you test it? How Sim do you get Simple the, blood test. Simple blood test. Sure. So the blood test comes back and if somebody has a real low or a medium low IgG, is there a difference between that? Well, your infections tend to be more frequent, more severe with the real low, and you, they've done numerous studies showing the frequency of infections increases the lower your IgG goes. So that is important to have a certain level. So if I'm sick all the time and my IgG is low, can you treat that? You couldn't Absolutely. replace the IgA. What can no. you do with IgG? Well, we can replace the IgG and do almost as good of a job as the IgA would do. It gets into the tissues and it will, it, we think, get into at the surface of the tissues as well too.